energy, 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 energy. Hey everybody, we are excited to show you today a project that we have been working on for the last three years. Yeah, maybe you've seen something in the mix, you might know what's up, but today, we're gonna officially show you a first look at the most ambitious project we've done to date. We wanna show you some of the steps that we go through to make our videos, introduce you to different team members, so you can see why these projects take us like three years. Everything that we make is free because of your generous support, so we wanna show you what we were able to do together in 2023. We got to have conversations on our podcast and make videos on the firstborn, mm. the anointed, the city, and the chaos dragon. Also, we brought uh, the Bible Project Classroom into the Bible Project app. So you can right now go to the app and take the classes Heaven and Earth, from Adam to Noah, from Noah to Abraham, Introduction to the Hebrew Bible, Jonah, Ephesians, and the Overview of Exodus. We created guide pages for every book of the Bible on our website, and we created an annotated Bible in our app. And all year we were working on our secret, not so secret project that we'll tell you more about later. Right, that's what we did together in 2023. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how many people are along for the ride with us here at Bible Project. What's really important is, is to stop and imagine that's millions of human images of God. Um, and God is doing something powerful in their story uh, by connecting to the Bible in a really powerful way and how amazing uh, that we get to participate in just a little bit of their story uh, through the resources that we're making. Now it's time to meet the team here, mm -hmm. learn our process, and you're gonna see the top secret video series we've been working on for three years. Step one, scholarship. I'm excited to introduce you to a friend that I work very closely with here in the project. Yeah, my name is Renji Abraham, Dean of Scholarship at Bible Project. I had a background in pastoral ministry, and I was a dean at a university in the Portland area. And now I get to serve as the Dean of Scholarship here at Bible Project. All the content that we make uh, at Bible Project, we're engaging the Bible in its original languages, in its cultural context. And so one person can consult a community of scholars by reading their books. But how much better is it to have a community of scholars consulting an even bigger community of scholars? What we also have with this team is they come from different perspectives, different cultural backgrounds, different biblical studies expertise. So we have New Testament scholars on the team, Old Testament scholars, their different focus. And when we have conversation, everyone's bringing their expertise, their research to the table to help us create this content. You guys as a scholar team have been working on the big series mm -hmm. that we're going to be sharing mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about how you guys have been prepping mm -hmm. uh, with this passage, this book of the Bible. What are, what are we doing here? <laughs> Well, one thing we did was we took about half a day a week over the course of four or five months. Five um, months. And we just crawled through sentence by sentence this section of the Bible, reading, translating, debating how to interpret every part of this section of the Bible. You guys created your own translation for this section of the Bible. We did. Yeah. Yes, we did. Yeah. And it took hours <laughs> and hours of time to translate it yeah. as a team. Working on this project, we made 261 pages of notes. So these are notes for a whole book of the Bible? This is three chapters. So after the notes are made, this is where I get to join the party mm -hmm. because the notes turn into discussions that we get to have on the podcast. And so while we're talking like this right now, on the podcast, we get to talk like this. Step two, dialogue. Yeah, so after, um the scholarship team puts together all of the notes. Uh, you and I step into this room and we talk for hours and hours uh, to work out uh, the, the language, the storyline, and the key ideas that we want to put into the video. And then when we finish, we start writing a script. This conversation was never meant to be a piece of content itself. Yeah. 
it was just a part of the process. Yeah. But we turned on mics one day and we started sharing it out and, mm. and thousands of people started listening. Yeah. We would do it if no one listened. That's right. <laughs> um, it's a really important part. Yeah. Um, it's one of my favorite parts of the job. Me too. And I think it's what makes the videos land in a special way that they're, they come out of a true dialogue of mm -hmm. us working out this idea mm. together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think uh, what years of talking through the Bible with you has done for me is it's helped me see that every time I return to some part of the Bible with fresh questions, I see more and I see new things. And so over the years, it's forced me to develop the habit of always expecting that there's something I still don't get. There's always something new to be seen and to discover, and especially um, when I'm coming to the Bible. And that's been a great gift of our conversations. I love to celebrate good questions. Hmm. Like it's just as important to have a good question to find as it is to then find a good answer yeah. because it's bringing you on the path to being curious and letting yourself learn new things. Yes. Another part of what makes this one of my favorite is the fact that in another life, John, you could have been a stand-up comedian. <laughs> <laughs> you have impeccable timing. Uh, so anyway, your ability to make Bible jokes as we're talking about parts of the Bible is unrivaled in my experience. So thank you for that special gift. You're welcome. My favorite is when I make a joke and you miss it. <laughs> but I just hope that someone listening... <laughs> Got it? Got it. It probably happens a lot. It happens actually a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, bet, I bet it does. I bet it does. I've grown a lot through these mm. conversations more than any part of this project. Mm. Just the ability to go slowly through texts and ideas, but have the space to ask questions. Mm. It's been a real honor to have these conversations with mm. you. Thank you for spending so much time with me, mm -hmm. a student of one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and what we, so we talk for hours and hours. And then what we try and do in the dialogue videos is genuinely condense into a few minutes some version of the conversation in the journey that we went on together. And it takes a lot of work. Um, but it really is trying to capture some of what we experienced and discovered together. Our animation studio is a massive part of the process, and that's what we're going to look at next. Step three, making content. We want to introduce you to some of the key artists who help us make that content. Rose, you have been a part of the project since like the third video. Um, you are our story lead. Tell us what that means. I get your scripts and you guys have some great dialogue. I love it, but then it's my job to help add pictures to it. So where, where we start with that is figuring out what you guys are trying to say very clearly. And once we figure out what you're trying to say, I can start layering on pictures that agree with what you're saying. That's more than just characters acting or we need this little symbol. Ultimately, really starting to craft a product that thinks about our audience first. You brought a script with you. Let's see what it looks like when it gets to you. So this is episode two of what video? I don't think I'm allowed to tell you which one. Oh, okay. This is the top secret video. Oftentimes we come to you with a script and we think that we know what we're saying. Oftentimes you ask us such good questions that we realize we don't really know what we're saying yet and we're not as clear as we think. It's a really wonderful back and forth actually part of the process. Agreed, yeah. Uh, so when you guys bring me this, it sounds really good as two people talking. And when it sounds good just as a dialogue, it doesn't always sound as good when you add pictures to it. I could make things very unclear by adding the wrong picture. And so it's my job to sort of think antagonistically so that I'm not disagreeing with you. <laughs> did you bring some storyboards? I did. Okay. So it starts like a pile of words. And then I bring you in to a series of choppy moving pictures. But I'm still trying to capture emotion and capture where your eye is looking to tell the story. How long does it take to storyboard one page of script? If you give me a five minute video, it takes me about three months to storyboard that. Maybe four if we need to do a lot of revisions. And we often do 
a lot of revisions. Yeah, well, we need yeah. to because w once we get words and pictures matching, we'll realize even more things I didn't get to ask about and how we want those to progress. In this one, we realized that acting was a really great metaphor, but I didn't know that when I started storyboarding. We found that together. And so I had to go back through, do a lot of revisions and add more instances of acting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've always enjoyed the process of bringing you a script that I think makes sense and then seeing the creative decisions of how you would visualize it that helps me see where things don't make as much sense as I thought, but then also areas where you made more sense of it mm. than I realized was even there. Yes. Yeah. Which is really fun. Yeah. And then we get to develop a visual image or a metaphor together that we had never even thought of. It's, tr it's really like a discovery process as much as it is a creating a thing that will uh, go down to the next stage. So the acting metaphor is from what video? Episode six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also with us at the table is Robert Perez, our creative director. Okay, so Robert, you get storyboards mm -hmm. and then your job is to make final art that we can animate with. Yeah, so I will get something like this, but there's so much that isn't there. There's no color, there's no dimension, there's so much missing. So then from there, you might end up with something like this. Okay, from here, this is like a first pass of this particular video style. And then it's my job to kind of go in with the team, kind of work on, oh, you know what, I think like this hand is just a little bit too pushed away. Maybe we could add some like gentleness to it, you know? So from there, I will continue to layer on. That's a lot of notes. These are a lot of notes. In this stage, you can start to understand the emotions or the feelings behind the characters. So that's why this stage is so important to, to take our time and to work through. And then uh, once all of that is good, then we'll start to work on the actual like coloring of this particular character, which is obviously Jesus. And that's my team's job to, hmm. to get us to that point. So then you give the illustrations over to the animators and they put it to motion. Yeah, and this is actually um, the video in its final form I was working on. So there it is. But that wasn't even a full second that you ended up seeing is what all of that work goes to. And it's totally worth it because we get to then share these videos all over the world. Yeah, so our process begins in English, but then we get to connect with studios all over the world who then localize these videos into over 55 languages. The Hebrew word is Hanun. As word Hen wird oft mit Gnade oder Gunst übersetzt. Si vous savez étudier, comment ce mot est utilisé dans la Bible? Step four. We localize everything. And so, here at the table with us is Allison. You are our VP of Global. That's right. For us, the videos are so much more than words on a page. They're actually a full experience. You're hearing voiceover that's helping you connect a concept that you're not as familiar with to something that you are familiar with. And not all of those familiar concepts translate directly into other languages or cultures. So we work with really talented teams doing translation, voiceover, animation, who can speak to what makes sense in their culture to help communicate this concept or idea in a way that comes across clearly. How many languages are we in now? At this point, 55 languages and dialects. And how many videos across those languages? Ooh, this year we hit a major milestone. We crossed 5,000 localized videos. Mm. Uh, that happened in May. And since then, we've localized another like 300. So mm. yeah, well over 5,000. 55 languages, 5,000 videos. How many people then can engage with something Bible Project? In total, that would reach over 5 billion people in a language they speak as a first or second language. That's a few billion people. It's a lot. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> um, so the Bible Project is a crowdfunded endeavor. How is this part of the project funded? A huge part of it is our patron community. Uh, another huge part of it is many local teams are actually crowdfunding in a similar way that we have or finding generous organizations who want to support the work in their local context. 
So that's been pretty remarkable. Yeah, tell us more about these local teams. Who are we working with? We work with many translators, voiceover studios, and animation studios around the world to take our English files and add the translated text and voiceover. So it's a global team. Yeah, we have native speakers who work with us to review the content at every step of the localization process. So they're reading through every translated script, listening to every recorded voiceover, every animated video to give cultural feedback, to give uh, notes on the speed of the, the speaking, and also the heart and tone because we want Battle Project to come across in a way that's really relatable. Yeah, so our language advisors are really, really important people. Very important. In the process. Yes, yes. yes. Thank you for sharing, Allison. What an amazing journey to be able to get to localize all these videos, share them with billions of human beings. But it's also important to note that the goal isn't to just get people to watch videos. We want to help people fall in love with the scriptures uh, and learn how to read the Bible for themselves. And so that leads to step five that we're working on to do that, which is to make lots of Bible nerds. And here to talk about that with us at the table is Aaron Vroom. Hi. Hi, Aaron. You are the leader of the team of the Bible Project Classroom, which is about like what it sounds, we film classes about the Bible. Um, what makes Bible Project Classroom unique? Yeah, so you can access super high quality biblical education online for free. The other thing is the way that we approach the classes. And so we want to have a communal feel to the classes. So we bring different people to participate in the discussion. And I think the different perspectives really make the classes more engaging. And um, it's also wonderful to have a scholar walk us through these passages, I think that just adds so much to your understanding. Yeah, there's something about, I mean, I can do a lot of work to prepare content, you know, to present to students, but there's something just unreplaceable that happens when you get a table of people who, from different walks of life around one part of the Bible to read, study, and discuss its meaning together. And so you can never really predict where a session is gonna go or where the conversation will go, which is, I think, one of the most enjoyable parts about Classroom. What I love about it is you're actually going through every passage, like line by line, mm -hmm. reading the Bible. It's a ton of Bible. Yeah, and at this point, we actually have over 100 hours of lecture that you can work through. How many students are taking Bible Project classes? At this point, we have 35,000 people actively learning with us each month. And the cool thing about that is that that's actually four times the amount of, of who was using it last year. Well, 4x growth in one year, why is that? Yeah, so a big effort this year was to bring Classroom to the app. So you could access it on desktop, but we've brought uh, this technology to the app and that makes it even more accessible. It's so easy to just jump into a session. We have features like audio mode that allow you to intake this kind of information on the go. So we've seen a huge amount of growth this year just because we're moving Classroom to the app. So tell us what is gonna be new for Classroom in 2024. So in 2024, what we're gonna do is take the winning design that we figured out on the app and we're gonna move it to the desktop, which is great. And it's what a lot of people have been asking for. Your progress will sync between app and desktop. And uh, we're gonna add some new features as well. And I think you guys are really gonna like it. What classes are gonna be released next year in 24? Yes, so we're gonna release a total of four classes and that works into 56 hours of lecture. So it's actually a lot of content we're releasing next year. Um, we're gonna release Ezekiel class uh, and we're gonna finish the remainder of our Genesis series. So Abraham, Jacob, and Joseph. All year we'll also be filming new classes. What new classes are being filmed? We're gonna start working our way through the Gospel of Matthew, which is really cool because it's really been a focus of the project lately. Yes, mm -hmm. the very secret project, which yes. may or may not be in the Gospel of Matthew. <laughs> yes, so what's really amazing about the <laughs> is that it's the first main like block of speeches that gives in the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew's distributed five blocks of teaching throughout the Gospel of Matthew to mirror the Okay, hold on, Tim, Tim, they're bleeping you out still. So, I, you know what, let's, this is time. Let's, oh. let's announce we just do it? what we're working on in 2024. Okay. It's time. 2,000 years ago, on the eastern side of the Mediterranean Sea, a teacher named Jesus of Nazareth went up onto a hillside and addressed a large crowd. It was a crowd of nobodies, poor and sick people, their land occupied by the Roman Empire. And while they don't look like much, Jesus claimed that something surprising was starting 
with them. Jesus was claiming that heaven was coming to earth right here and now, beginning with these people. That's unexpected. What does that mean for God's kingdom to come on earth? Imagine it, a group of powerless nobodies ruling the world through generosity, forgiveness, and justice. This is a Jesus-style revolution. In six case studies, he'll quote a command from the Torah and then explain how it reveals God's wisdom. Underneath the command, provocatively shown surface manifestation of something that is way deeper. Offering a bold and beautiful vision of human life that's going to display God's kingdom to all the world. We're going to have monthly releases here on YouTube, and you don't have to wait long for the first one. It drops on January 1st. Sermon on the Mount is going to be a 10-part video series, and then it's also going to have a companion podcast series. But we'll also have in our app uh, a new thing called Weekly Playlist, where you'll be able to see what we're working on and thinking about that week together as a community. Our whole team's been working hard for three years, and we get to finally release this, and it's all for free because of the generous support of thousands of people just like you. Yeah, thank you for being part of this with us, everybody. And we have made videos and content actually about the whole of the Bible, and you can see our whole library, everything we've been making over the last 10 years at BibleProject.com.